River begins in the Colorado Rockies as melting snow. On its 1,460-mile course, it runs through America's heartland as it winds its way to the Mississippi. Inheriting its name from the Quapaw Indian word meaning downstream people, the Arkansas first greeted European eyes in 1541. Hernando de Soto, lured by images of fabulous wealth, brought his expedition inland from the Mississippi and wintered in the vicinity of Fort Smith, near the Arkansas-Oklahoma border. 145 years later, the first permanent European settlement, the Arkansas Post, was founded by Henri de Tonti, near the confluence of the Arkansas and the Mississippi. This wilderness trading center was the earliest attempt to open the way for commerce between the newly established French settlements and the Gulf Coast. The commercial potential of the Arkansas River was known by the area's earliest inhabitants. Moving goods up and down the river was a quick and cost-efficient method of sustaining life as long as the river cooperated. With a mind of its own, the unpredictable and frequently raging Arkansas continued to inspire man's imagination while depleting his pocketbook. For hundreds of years, the quality of life on the river rose and fell with the water's flow. Floods and droughts made dependable navigation impossible. Taunted by a vision of what could be, frustrated townspeople turned their backs on the river, using it for little more than waste disposal. The Great Flood of 1927, which put half the state underwater, finally brought national attention to the flooding problems of the Mississippi and its tributaries. The Flood Control Act of 1928 defined the flooding as a national problem and authorized a comprehensive program of flood reduction to be paid for by the federal government. Slowly, the construction of levees began to address this, and the age-old vision of thriving river cities and year-round river traffic rematerialized. In May of 1935, a group of prominent citizens formed the Arkansas Basin Association. Working with like-minded individuals in Oklahoma, they lobbied Congress on behalf of improvements for the Arkansas River. Their persistence was rewarded when the Little Rock District of the Corps of Engineers received federal authorization to begin 47 flood reduction projects for three river basins. Active in snag removal and dredging of the river since 1834, the Corps of Engineers vigorously approached its new task. Four reservoirs were under construction by 1940, and a survey team was formed to investigate prospective development. Overruling the recommendation of the Board of Engineers for Rivers and Harbors, Lieutenant General Eugene Reibold, Chief of Engineers, endorsed the multiple purpose plan which became the basis for the Arkansas River Navigation System and a part of the Rivers and Harbors Act of 1946. This act authorized construction of the locks and dams that would maintain navigation during low flows. The McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Navigation System is a series of locks and dams and reservoirs that make the lower 400 miles of the Arkansas River navigable year-round. This incredible feat was accomplished through the visionary power of the Arkansas-Oklahoma business communities and two U.S. Senators. John L. McClellan of Arkansas and Robert S. Kerr of Oklahoma working tirelessly to persuade Congress to invest $1.3 billion to develop the Arkansas River into a navigable water system. The largest civil works project in the history of the Corps of Engineers required the design and construction of 17 locks and dams, the deepening of the river's channel, and the stabilization of its banks. Construction on the first structure began in 1957. By 1969, 11 dams had been placed in operation in the state of Arkansas. At the 89% completion point in the summer of 1970, the Little Rock District had constructed 239 miles of revetment, created 150 miles of dikes, and moved 38 million cubic yards of earth and sand in the process of stabilizing the river channel. On June 5, 1971, 25 years after the Rivers and Harbors Act became law, President Nixon dedicated the navigation system. The first commercial tow made its way to Catoosa, Oklahoma in December of 1970. Today, the navigation system moves millions of tons of commodities each year. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, a gallon of fuel will move a ton of goods 59 miles by truck, 202 miles by rail, and 514 miles by barge. 
one barge carries as much as 60 tractor trailers. An eight barge tow equal the capacity of 480 tractor trailers using 1,200 to 3,000 horsepower and requires only a crew of eight. Along with the obvious saving to the bottom line, transporting tonnage on the waterway vitally reduces fuel consumption, noise pollution, and congestion on our rail and highway systems. Although manufacturing has replaced farming as Arkansas's leading branch of the economy, during the first 25 years of operation, the most important outbound commodities shipped on the navigation system were agricultural products, wheat, rice, and soybeans. Agricultural fertilizer made up a significant part of the inbound traffic. An extensive network of public and private ports assists the movement of cargo. The Port of Pine Bluff, with its 372-acre harbor industrial district, is the closest Arkansas River port to the Mississippi. Heavy-duty cranes help with the transfer of grain, lumber, paper, and steel. The foreign trade zone of the port of the Little Rock Public Terminal serves as a base for future trade expansion. Approximately 50 firms with private terminals complete the network from Dumas to Fort Smith. The value of the waterway persuaded industries to build new plants in the Arkansas Valley, providing thousands of jobs for rural residents. No longer a source of irritation, the river has become a source of livelihood and recreation. Towns along the river render unique stopping off places for boaters and visitors. Sister cities Van Buren and Fort Smith combine some of the earliest history of the state. Ozark, the beauty at the bend of the river, boasts one of the 16 prettiest bridges in the nation. Not far away is the wine capital of Arkansas, the town of Baltus. Popular summer events, such as the Johnson County Peach Festival in Clarksville and Little Rock's River Fest can be enjoyed along with great fishing and camping at Marlton and Conway. History lovers can view Native American artifacts dating back 12,000 years at the Arkansas Tech University Museum in Russellville, or experience a summer solstice at the Toltec Mounds east of North Little Rock. Recreated pioneer life at the Deshea County Museum in Dumas gives a glimpse of the fortitude required of early settlers. Tempering the Arkansas has increased the richness of life in the natural state. The navigation system's reservoirs and pools are stocked with game fish. From bank fishing to national tournaments, the waterway is frequently chosen as a favorite fishing hole. Big name contests such as the Bassmasters Classic and the Redman All-American offer six-figure purses attracting thousands of participants. Boating enthusiasts are linked by the system to 14,000 miles of waterways in the United States. Rowboats, sailboats, speedboats, luxury yachts, passenger steamboats, and everything in between can be found plying the channel. The beautiful lakes which were formed by the construction of the dams are a resounding tribute to the marriage of progress and the quality of life. The navigation system added 43 recreational sites. Millions of visitors join Arkansas each year in the use of these panoramic facilities. These visitors come in all shapes and species. Migrating birds find friendly resting places along the banks of the system. Wildlife habitats, created to encourage the return of several endangered species, are successfully providing breeding grounds. Through a strictly managed program, the least tern and bald eagle dive for fish and nest on the Arkansas once again. Carefully preserving the past supplies a dynamic key to the future. The McClellan Kerr navigation system has proven the validity of Henri de Tonti's dream to use the Arkansas River to carry on trade with the rest of the world. International outreach is aggressively underway, and sightings of foreign vessels are rapidly becoming commonplace. As industries continue to realize this commercial advantage by locating plants to utilize the navigation system, our Kansans continue working together to provide the services and programs that strengthen life along the river. <laughs>